So welcome back to another episode, my friends. I'm bringing you a bonus episode every Friday for the month of August and September. It's a little surprise. These are on location interviews that I did while I was at the National Health Association Conference in June. As you know, that was the first time that I attended with my husband, Dr. Riss, and we had a wonderful time. I got to meet Wanda Huberman, Mark Huberman, Kathleen Gage, V. Lynn Hawkins, and all these individuals that I've never met in person. So I had a wonderful time. And so I'm introducing you every Friday to a new guest, a new individual um, that I got to interview uh, at the NHA conference. So I hope that you enjoy these conversations. They're very short. I filmed them on location. I didn't use a mic. I was just inspired to see why people went to the conference and what they were getting out of it. Some people are leaders. They offer support in their community. I have a physician in there. I have a book author. So you'll see this is just a general introduction for all these wonderful conversations that I will have. And I hope that you enjoy. This is the Healthy Lifestyle Solutions Podcast, and I'm your host, Maya Acosta. If you're willing to go with me, together we can discover how simple lifestyle choices can help improve our quality of life and increase our longevity in a good way. Let's get started. We are at the National Health Association's annual conference, and we have Meryl Fury. Hi, Meryl. Hi, Maya. What inspired you to explore a whole food plant-based lifestyle and how has it impacted your overall health and well-being? So, I started eating mostly all plants all the time when I was 15. That's just a little couple couple years ago, (laughs) more like (laughs) 45 years ago or so. Um, And it came out of a change in the the economic situation in the country. So back at that time, something like 1975-ish, um, the price of beef went up real high. And my mother used to complain about how expensive it was to put three square meals on a table, and that's meat um, and dairy products and all that. But really, she was talking about meat, how expensive it was to put meat on the table even two times a day. Because breakfast back then would have been like oatmeal and you know maple or you know, some kind of hot cereal. But lunch and dinner would have definitely had meat. She was complaining about how expensive it was. And watching her go through all that upset was very upsetting for me. And one weekend, a friend of mine and I decided that we would stop eating meat to save our pa- our mothers in particular from being upset about the family budget. And if we stopped eating meat, that meant something like um, two times seven, at least 14, maybe 15 meals a week, they could just give that meat portion to our brother, or sister, the father, whoever else they could eat it themselves, they wouldn't have to worry about us. That's how it started. And from there, I just continued. I started learning about health, I started learning about herbology, I started studying and reading, because of course, my mother, who was a gym teacher, had been well trained in nutrition. I was in 1970, you know, she had been trained before I was born. So um, she was very afraid that I was going to grow up, you know, sickly. I was going to be skinny. I was going to be a weakling. I was going to have, you know, poor bone formation or whatever she was worried about. So I had to be able to answer the questions that she would throw at me about nutrition. So I started studying and then I got older and I kept removing animal products from my diet. Um, And it took a while. It was a journey. but. I belonged to a co-op, there was brown rice and there were beans and there were mushrooms and there were fruits and vegetables and that's what I did. I wound up hanging around a bunch of other college people who were vegetarian at the time and that's how I how it started and it just kept growing because I realized that over time I just felt better without having animal products in my diet. That's how it started. Awesome. And it turns out that you were right in the sense that um, choosing this way of life has given you quality of life, you're not dealing with any health issues. I am not. I am, I'll say it, I'm 62 (laughs) years old. I do not have any health issues. You know, I, beyond the ones I was born with, which is like, you know, sickle cell trait. (laughs) You know, there's not much we can do with that. But I know that, because I look at my family members, right? 
they show the effects of eating the standard American diet. You know, there's high blood pressure and there's diabetes and there's obesity and there's just all kinds of things. And I don't suffer from those things, for which I'm grateful. So what does it mean to you to come to the NHA conference? Mark and Wanda Huberman, as people, are genuinely supportive of our nonprofit work. I lead a nonprofit, it's called Plant Based Nutrition Movement. We're physically located in the Chicago area, but we're, our reach is really online, right? So we do a lot of Zoom meetings and webinars and events. Our primary focus is helping people, our mission is to help people transition from poor quality ways of eating to high quality ways of eating, which include lots and lots and lots and lots of plants, if not plant exclusive. We realize that people are on a continuum, that's a journey, right? Along with that, we focus on child nutrition because in this country, we don't seem to really pay attention to what we feed our children. We feed our children a lot of unhealthy foods all the time. And it's always a reason, oh, they're a kid, let them be a kid, and then there's what the USDA says is okay for them to eat, and there's fast food, and there are commercials, there's marketing, there's what goes on in schools. And by and large, American children are just really malnourished. They're very poorly fed, very, very low quality foods. So our focus is to teach children directly, teach their parents, their caregivers, their grandparents, their aunts and uncles, whoever else is around them, um, the importance of feeding them healthy food so that they don't grow up with all the standard American diseases that come from the standard American diet. They don't, you know, our goal, if we could have anything, 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 it would be that no child ever has to deal with diabetes or obesity or high blood pressure or heart disease. None of that. All those lifestyle diseases, in my opinion, should be eradicated for children. It shouldn't be an issue. There's no reason that in the last five years, the CDC has decreased our children's life expectancy four times. That is unconscionable. We're of the top 10 richest nations in the world, regardless of how you want to define rich. And we, we are watching our children die. We're watching them die younger and younger, which is to me, it's, a, it's, it's not acceptable. This uh, organization that you created and support group, if you put a lot of emphasis on exactly that, working with children, trying to outreach to children. You have a podcast where you have these conversations. Last year you had an online summit, same thing, geared towards supporting children. You, do you want to tell us anything about that, about your work, your mission? Maya, thank you so much. I really love Maya. <laughs> She's beautiful. Um, <laughs> You know, that is just my passion, and it has become the driving force for our organization. It wakes me up in the morning, and it puts me to bed at night, making sure that we keep getting this message out to people, that our children deserve better. They deserve better than chicken nuggets. They deserve better than pepperoni pizza, jelly bellies, Twizzlers, Twinkies. They deserve better than all that. They deserve real human food that supports their growth and their development physically, emotionally, psychologically, all of it. So that is what we focus on. We go into schools, we teach children directly in elementary schools, mostly at this point, but we also go into boys and girls clubs. That's probably one of the easiest places to get in. Or faith-based groups. Anywhere we have a collection of people, and uh, children specifically, in an educational setting, and we teach them about healthy food. We teach them how to cook it. We partner with community garden experts, and they grow the food, help the children learn about that, and then we take the produce from the garden and we teach the kids how to cook it and they can taste it. And sometimes they like it and sometimes they don't, but that's what it's like to be a kid, and that's how that is, right? We do summits and online events, which are aimed toward the parents and adults, and we have researchers and medical providers and culinary experts and educators, anybody, anybody who can speak this message in so many different voices, a diverse audience and a diverse set of presenters so that we can get this message out to people. Because if we don't, we're going to get more of the same. Right now, here's a scary, another scary statistic, right? Right now, one in 40, no, 
Yeah, one out of 47 children are diagnosed with autism. <gasps> That's crazy. That was not that way when I was a kid. I didn't even know what autism was. It is. And a lot of it has been found to be, I'm not saying all of it, but a lot of it has been found to be associated with the kind of chemicals that are in our children's diets. The food colors and the additives and the preservatives and the GMOs and the, all of this stuff, which would be eliminated by giving them way more fruits, vegetables, whole grains, beans, nuts, seeds, and mushrooms. So that's what we work on. Because honestly, the next scary statistic is that by 2025, maybe half our children will have autism. Oh my goodness. Yes, it's going that fast. It is going that fast. Right now, teachers can't even teach the way they used to teach for when Maya was a kid or when I was a kid because the children can't take that level of complexity in the education unless they're in some very um, tightly controlled, high input type environment. You know? But the average kids in public schools are having a very hard time. This is important work that you're doing. If people are interested in supporting your work, your foundation, or learning more about how they can help educate children, What's, uh, what link would you recommend? Wow, so two links I would give. One is our website, which is Plant-Based Nutrition Movement. For the website, it's pbnm.org. And then our podcast is Growing a Healthy Child. And you can just find that anywhere you get your podcast. Those are the two main ones. If you'd like to contact us directly, you can email us is really the easiest way. And that's at 6mseeds because our child nutrition project is called, called 6 million seeds. The email is the number 6, M like and Mary, seeds at pbnm.org. Meryl, thank you so much for sharing all of this and, and supporting the children. So thank you for your work. My pleasure, Maria. Thanks so much. You've been listening to the Healthy Lifestyle Solutions podcast with your host, Maya Acosta. If you've enjoyed this content, please share with one friend who can benefit. You can also leave us a five-star review at ratethispodcast.com forward slash HLS. This helps us to spread our message. As always, thank you for being a listener.